Hey, thanks for joining us at Brook Lake. My name is Mason. I'm one of the leaders here, and we're glad that you've taken some time to join us. If you're new around here, maybe this is your first time with us, you can check out mynextbeststep.org to learn more about taking next steps in your walk with Jesus, even just letting us know that you're new around here so that we can connect with you on whatever level you're comfortable doing that at this point. Also, if you're signed up for the weekly emails, then you saw this a couple times this week, but I want to give you kind of a third heads up that starting on February 14th, we're taking our first step towards reopening. What that looks like is that certain teams are going to be here in the building on Sunday morning while we are live streaming into your home. Those teams will be here to do things like take photos, run social media, run cameras, etc. So you'll hear more about that at the end of today's service. I'll go into a little bit more detail, but I just wanted to give, give you a heads up about that, that some of our teams will be back February 14th in the building, uh, serving here together. Again, we're really glad that you're with us. Would you just uh, take a deep breath even, practically? Let's just center ourselves as we prepare to enter into a time of worship. tries to roll over my bones Sorrow comes to steal the joy I own Brokenness and pain is all I know I won't be shaken No, I won't be shaken It's my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love
your life for mine Nailed to the cross you crucified All my sin and shame Was washed by your mercy You are the treasure I find My reason for living So let my life be an offering To the one who is sing this next part church right now we are united in our homes so unite even further with me and right there in your living room between you and God lift your hands lift your hands as a sign of thankfulness. Lift your hands as a sign of surrender, however it applies to you. Man, it is powerful. Spirit of the living God, I ask that you come dwell among us right now. Right now, Father. We wanna know you, we wanna experience you. Take us deeper in our relationship with you, Father. I'm going to say that again. We want to know you, God, and we want to experience you right now. As I lift my hands up, lay my whole life down, my whole life down before you. As I lift my hands up, lay my whole life down, my whole life down before you. I lift my hands up, lay my whole life down, my whole life down before you. So I lift my hands up, lay my whole life down, my whole life down before you. So I lift my hands up, lay my whole life down, my whole life down before you. So I lift my hands up, lay my whole life down, 
my whole life down before you As I lift my hands up, lay my whole life down My whole life down before you Yes, I lift my hands up, lay my whole life down My whole life down for you As I lift my hands up I lay my whole life down My whole life down For you Thank you, Father Before I spoke a word, you were singing over me Cause you have been so, so good to me Before I took a breath, you breathed your life in me So, so kind to me Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending Reckless love of God Oh, it chases me down Fights till I'm found Leaves the ninety-nine I couldn't earn it I don't deserve it yourself away only overwhelming never ending reckless love of God yeah your foe, still your love fought for me, as you have been so, so good to me, when I felt no worth, you paid it all for me, as you have been so, so kind to me.
shadow you won't light up Mountain you won't climb up Coming after me There's no wall you won't kick down Lie you won't tear down Coming after me Heavenly Father I just thank you God I thank you for your spirit that you send to help us God, I thank you that you pursue us in all of our wrongdoing. You never leave our side, God. You never let us walk alone. Thank you, Lord. Everybody, say out loud, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, I pray that you, you just speak directly to our hearts this morning. We love you, and in Christ's name we pray. Everybody said, amen. Well, if today is your first time with us, welcome. It's the perfect Sunday to jump in with us because we are launching a brand new mini-series within our broader study of the Book of Acts. We're calling this mini-series, this four-part mini-series, Devoted, but more on that in a moment. My name is Scott Harris, and I get the privilege of being the lead pastor of this community of Jesus followers we call Brook Lake. I am a husband, a father, a grandfather, and like I said, just doing my best to serve and follow Jesus with all of my heart. If you're new-ish around here, uh, please go to mynextbeststep.org. Let us know, click on the, the appropriate button that uh, lets us know you're brand new around here or newer around here, and we would love to get you on our mailing list and uh, give you more information about our church. Last four Sundays, we uh, were in a series talking about the church is born. And this led us uh, through chapter two, almost all the way to the end. And the big idea for the whole study of the book of Acts is found in chapter one, verse eight. And it says this, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. How do we know, that's by the way, that's Jesus speaking, how do we know that that scripture has been and is being fulfilled? It's really simple, we are here, we are here. It's reached all the way to the 253, this gospel, this good news, this good announcement. There has been so many witnesses Every generation has taken responsibility to witness to Jesus Christ, and it has gone out throughout the entire world. And that's the mission, that's the purpose we still find ourselves on, because there are people right here in the 253, there are people right here in the Puget Sound, there are people in Washington State, in the United States of America, and in the entire world that have not yet heard the good news or the good announcement. And we are obsessed with helping people know Jesus Christ, and we want to make sure everyone everywhere gets that good news. Well, today, like I said, we launch a new kind of mini-series within this broader study of the book of Acts, and we are calling this mini-series Devoted. We're going to do a slow crawl through the last few verses of chapter 2. Before we get to that, in ancient Rome, when scaffolding was being removed from a completed arch, the law required the engineer who built the arch to stand beneath it. He personally suffered the consequences of his work. Good work, he would live. Bad work, he would die. In some ways, we are all arch builders. I mean, the spiritual legacy we are leaving is entirely up to the building that we do today and tomorrow and the next day. The trail of faith we are laying down, are we building that trail of faith and in our community of faith on Jesus, the chief cornerstone, 
and the eternal purposes of God's church that withstand the shifting culture? Or are we building it upon personalities and temporary strategies that come and go? If only there was an explanation or an example of the church that gave them th themselves to the kingdom purposes of a church in their local context for the fulfillment of the mission of God to the glory of God. If only we had an example to follow. If only we could find a way to build the arch of the church in such a way that every single one of us would be enthusiastic to stand under, under as the scaffolding was removed. Fortunately, we do. We do have such an example. And in these next few verses, as we do a slow crawl through the month of February, we both get a description of what the early church gave themselves to, these overarching purposes, and we get a prescription, a description and a prescription of how we are to execute upon those purposes in modern day, right in here and right now. All right, we're going to go open to uh, Acts chapter 2, grab your app, grab your Bible. We'll also put those scriptures right there on the screen for you. But we're in Acts chapter 2, uh, verses 42 through 47, and we will be, as I said, I'm going to read the whole passage, and then we're going to go back and we're going to look at the first purpose. And uh, as I said, this is going to be a slow crawl for the month of February for four Sundays. So here's what it says, starting in verse 2. It says, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Okay, those were the four things. We'll come back to those in just a second. The question I want to ask is, as they devoted themselves to those four things, what was the result? Well, let's keep reading. Everyone was filled with awe, and many wonders and signs were being performed through the apostles. Now all the believers were together and held all things in common. They sold their possessions and property and distributed the proceeds to all as any had need. Every day they devoted themselves to meeting together in the temple and broke bread from house to house. They ate their food with joyful and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. Every day the Lord added to their number those who were being saved." So there were four things that these early followers of Jesus, led by the apostles, devoted themselves to. These new followers of Jesus did not, they didn't go back to living as they always had lived. They couldn't. They had a new identity that found its belonging in a new spiritual family called the church. Now they committed themselves to doing these things that the family prioritized. This passage in verse 42 says this, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, that's number one, to the fellowship, that's number two, to the breaking of bread, three, and to prayer. Today, we're going to look at the apostles' teaching. What is the apostles' teaching? Today, we have the apostles' teaching preserved for us in the scriptures, the Bible, Fellowship is another way of saying they shared life together and were deeply committed to one another. Breaking of bread refers to the weekly rhythm of sharing a meal together. And <clears throat> Jesus was welcomed into that meal and his very presence was celebrated and remembered and worshiped. And of course, we'll see through the book of Acts that prayer was central. But again, what was the apostles' teaching? The apostles' teaching. Well, first, the apostles' teaching was simply oral tradition as the apostles told what Jesus had done and they relayed all the teachings of Jesus, people began to take note. And as the apostles began to age, they determined we should write this stuff down. And so they wrote it down and it became historical biography and some letters that were included as well. Then these writings, these letters, these historical documents were circulated amongst the churches that were being built and being planted around the known region. And these documents quickly reviewed as sacred texts and they became protected. And in some cases, people gave their lives to protect them. 
Gradually, it became clear which works were truly genuine and which works were not. And by the end of the fourth century, the canon or the closed uh, scriptures were authorized and complete and definitively settled upon and accepted as the word of God. So we have the Old Testament, 39 books, and we have the New Testament, 27 books that make up the 66 books of our Bible. Well, these 27 books in the New Testament are primarily as a result of the apostles' teaching. So we have some of the apostles that actually wrote some of the content, and then we have others that sat under the apostles and studied the teachings of the apostles that took it very seriously, and they in turn wrote some of the letters that we have, for example, and this is what is commonly known as the scriptures. That is the apostles' teaching, and these early followers of Jesus in Acts chapter 2 says that the, they were devoted to to the apostles' teaching. I see a church in our future. I see a church that is radically devoted to the word of God, where we take our cues and we take our teachings primarily and almost exclusively from the word of God, that it is our foundation. I see a church that is centered around the Word of God and the Scriptures. I see people like you that make up our church, that prioritize the Word of God in your life. You see, as we have pivoted as a church and every church in the world, and we've gone to digital means and virtual and broadcasting, um, we will continue as we move back into in-person. We will continue to leverage digital technology, websites and apps and YouTube and Facebook and other means and modems that we can equip you to engage with the scripture every single day with reading plans and Bible teaching and long and short form podcasts and video content and so much more. Because the purpose is to help you engage with the scriptures so that you too can demonstrate a devotion to the apostles' teaching. You see, I'm speaking on behalf of our church leadership right now, but I want to make you a commitment as we move forward in devotion to Jesus. Our commitment to you is to provide solid Bible teaching that is accessible on platforms the majority of folks are using and whenever is best for their personal schedules. Let me say that once more. It's right there on the screen for you. Our commitment to you is to provide solid Bible teaching that is accessible on platforms the majority of folks are using and whenever is best for personal schedules. See, at the end of the day, I am radically committed to helping our leadership team and everybody that takes Jesus seriously as a mature follower of Christ to make disciples. Make disciples. What is a disciple? A disciple is a student of Jesus. It is, a, it is an apprentice to Jesus. It is a person that follows Jesus, not just in word, but in devotion. And I want your faith to go deep so the first thing we are committing ourselves to is solid Bible teaching that will come to you through the means that you find most accessible and whenever your schedule permits. But I'm asking you to make a few commitments as well. I want to challenge you to make a few commitments. And there's five commitments that you must make as you devote yourself to the engagement of Scripture. Number one, make it daily. Make it daily. Start with a verse, maybe one verse a day, and move on from there. The engagement of Scripture needs to be a daily engagement. 
We need to think of the consumption of Scripture in the same way that we would consume the nutrients necessary for our body and our brain. This, what we find in Scripture is the nutrients necessary for our spirit and our soul and our relationship to Jesus Christ. It has to be daily. Now, it's not meant to be a guilt thing, like when we miss a day or we miss a two. It's not a guilt thing. It's just a let's just get back into it thing. Like you can miss a couple meals and you're going to be fine, but you go too long and you'll find yourself malnourished. And what I think we have a lot, if I can be so bold and I'm trying to be as kind as I can, I think in America we have a lot of Christians that claim to follow Jesus, but in terms of the health of their soul, they're, they're malnourished. They're malnourished. And so we want you, and I'm challenging you, as we move forward and producing Bible teaching and content that's, content that's available to you, we want you to engage it more than just on Sundays. We want to challenge you to engage it on a daily basis, and we're going to help you do that. Number two, make it simple. Make it simple. Number one is make it daily. Number two is make it simple. If you want to give up on something that make it too complex, make it too confusing. One of the things that I want to challenge you to do if you're not sure where to get started and you don't have any regular routine of engaging the scripture is simply follow what your church is already doing. Follow these sermons that come to you every single week. Make the text that we teach on your weekly engagement text. Now, obviously, there's a lot of reading plans. You can find them in the YouVersion Bible app. You can download all kinds of tools. There's all kinds of stuff online. And, and, and that's all great and good and accessible to all of us. But one thing I find that will help us as a church community, I think, is if we come more into alignment together with what the Spirit of God is saying to us collectively. And as individually we dive into that, it becomes as simple as following along what your church is already doing. Number three, make yourself accountable. Make yourself accountable. Do it with others. Do it with others. Start a Facebook group, start some other group, um, join into uh, house churches. We're going to talk about house churches next Sunday, so don't miss that. But make sure you are accountable to other people in your engagement of Scripture. I just find that it is so helpful for me. If I know someone's going to ask me, how am I doing? Or if I know someone's going to bring up something that's in the text that I should have read or should have engaged and I didn't, I'm going to feel a little bit like a loser, right? Right? But I, so I want to make sure that I am accountable to somebody else. So we got make it daily, make it simple, make yourself accountable. The fourth commitment I want to ask you to make is to make it personal. Personal. The question to ask is, what is this teaching me? What is this teaching me? What is this sermon saying to me? What is this text as we read this on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday, what is it saying to me? You might want to ask yourself the question before you even open up the scripture. Say, Jesus, show me what you want to say to me. I find sometimes as I engage scripture, I just read it because it's the right thing to do. And, and some days that's okay. You just get through it, right? And you just plow through it and you just kind of give yourself to it. Um, <clears throat> there's not going to be this big revelation where the angels sing every single uh, day that you engage in scripture. But the more often you will start with, okay, God, I'm going to open up your word today. I want it to be personal. What is this going to teach me, the more you begin to read through those lenses and you begin to open up your own heart in your own life to what the Spirit wants to say in that moment through that text to you. And then number five, make it actionable. Make it actionable. The question to ask here is, what is this leading me to do? What is this leading me to do? These last two questions are critically important as you engage in Scripture. Number, the first question, let me review and go back, is what is this teaching me? And the second question, as you make it actionable, is what is this leading me to do? 
James, the half-brother of Jesus, he was so bold to say that if you actually don't obey and do what the scriptures call you to do, then your faith is dead. That's not my words, like I'm not saying that. And James has taken a lot of heat throughout the years for being so bold. But we've all seen people that claim to be followers of Jesus. They claim to be Christians, but man, their actions were as far away from the character and ways of Jesus as you can even imagine. This is what gets a lot of Christians in trouble. This is what's gotten generations of Christians in trouble. This is how you can know so much of Bible, but start wars in the name of Jesus. This is how you can know so much about the scripture, but be advocates for injustice in the name of Jesus. You see, we have to be people that do what the scriptures call us to do. This is how we have an active faith. And ultimately, this is how our faith grows exponentially. You see, the scriptures need to become the primary voice in your life. They need to become the primary influence in your life. This is why every single week we open up the Bible and we just say, God, what is the Bible saying to us? And we try to teach simply what the scriptures say to us. Because there's a lot of, how many of you know, there's a, there's a lot of competing voices out there. There's a lot of ideologies that are saying you need to live this way and you need to live that way. And what we need to do, brothers and sisters, family of God, people of Brook Lake, we need to surround ourselves, immerse ourselves in the word of God. And we don't want that to just be an aspiring value. We don't want it just to be kind of a, 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 a ethereal thing. We want it to be practical. And so we are gonna work very hard moving forward. Then even as we move toward coming back to in-person gatherings, we are gonna continue to prioritize the platforms that are accessible, like the one you're watching right now, like podcasts, and like other platforms to continue to get solid Bible teaching out there because we want the word of God to be the dominant voice in your life and in the 253 and around the world. Yesterday, we had uh, uh, family day. Yeah, family dinner at our house. And so at the time of this recording, it was Sunday. Yesterday was Sunday. And we had all the family over and my granddaughter was uh, there. And, and we've, uh, we've, we've taken one of the rooms upstairs in our house and we've just made it into a toy room. And there's a bunk bed with a ladder. And she loves to climb up the ladder and climb down the ladder and climb up the ladder and climb down the ladder. And I've got to be the one to be with her because I taught her how to do it. And so she's like, wants me to be there with her. And I was downstairs and she was upstairs and she comes to the railing and she says, Papa, that, that's my name for grandpa. Papa, get up here. <laughs> And if you know my uh, two-and-a-half-year-old granddaughter, you know she is spunky, full of life, and uh, she just kind of says it like it is. And I just looked at her and I says, yes, ma'am, whatever you need, whatever you want your papa to do, I am there. And that should be our reaction to the Word of God. When the Word of God says, hey, you, here's the way forward. Here's what I want you to believe. Here's what I want you to know. Here's what I want you to do. We simply say, all right. Okay, God. You see, a strong voice, a strong faith is built upon the voice of God that leads to an understanding of God, which leads to obeying God, which ultimately leads to intimacy with God. And if we will live this way as individuals and as a community as we form, continue to build out little pockets of community where people are engaging with one another and engaging with the scripture, we will become a strong community of faith, even stronger than we are today. 
Writer Nisam Nicholas Taleb has contrasted two kinds of systems or organizations. Some may appear strong and powerful, but in truth, they are dangerously fragile. These are organizations in which one small change could threaten the entire system. The biblical metaphor for this kind of system is Goliath, the giant Philistine warrior. In 1 Samuel 17, it's described as Goliath is described as his armor and his weapons in great deal, emphasizing his unparalleled size and strength. He appears to be the perfect war machine designed to destroy any other soldier. However, when confronted by an unexpected opponent, a small shepherd boy with a sling, Goliath's greatest asset, his size and his strength, became his fatal weakness. The Philistine's massive forehead was an easy target for an experienced Slinger. That's what you called people back in the day that were experts at slinging stones. So David exploited this fragile system. We might assume that the opposite of a fragile system is a robust one, an organization that is designed to withstand any single threat. But the author, Taleb, disagrees and says that the best systems don't merely resist threats, but actually grow stronger when challenged. He calls such systems anti-fragile. Consider our muscles. When put under stress, our muscles don't just flex or resist the challenge, but they actually rebuild themselves to be stronger and therefore better prepared for the next stress they face. Nature is full of anti-fragile organisms from our immune system to ecosystems. This is why so many Christians, not understanding this principle, carry so much anxiety today and why we're conditioned to see a threat behind every cultural or political change. It also reveals why so many Christians have an isolation problem. We think that if we could just crawl into some sanitized bubble, that we will, be, we will be able to resist every threat that comes spiritually our way. You see, the church in the New Testament, the one we are reading about right now in this series, and the one that we're discovering in the month of February, February that was devoted to four things, they weren't fragile. They were anti-fragile. They were resilient. They may have fallen many times throughout the book of Acts. We will read of mistakes that they make. And they've fallen to the mat, but they always got, got back up before the referee got to 10. The early Christians appeared to actually believe Jesus when he said the gates of hell would not prevail against his church, Matthew 16, 18. And when the church faced genuine persecution, which we will read about as we journey through Acts, as it did in Jerusalem following the martyrdom of Stephen, rather than extinguishing its mission, the church only grew stronger and its mission multiplied faster and broader. And even today, we see that where the church is advancing most powerfully in the world is often where it is most challenged. The American church, Brook Lake, listen to this, has found itself with a choice to make. We can hang tight to the fragile arches we have built in the past, or we can rebuild arches on the purposes and principles of God's eternal word to us so that strong disciples are made. And as we do this, we will be devoted to four things. A deep devotion to scripture, a deep and authentic devotion to community among ourselves, where the sharing of meals and the sharing of resources and the sharing of life is emphasized with Jesus being invited to be central to that 
as we remember his death and resurrection as the cornerstone to our faith. And we will be radically devoted to prayer as the very life source of who we are called to be and to become. The anti-fragile church will be a church devoted to scripture, community, Jesus, and prayer. I want to invite you to go on this journey with us in the month of February. I want you to ask your, yourself this question today, how can I be more vo- devoted to scripture? The next week, as we look at the second principle, ask yourself the same thing regarding that principle and the third and the fourth week. And I'm asking all of you to lean in to this future shaping teaching coming straight from God's word as we allow God to shape us into who he is making us to be. And I promise you, church, as we come out of this pivot moment in the history of the church, we will emerge stronger and more impactful because we are building the future upon the word of God. Let's pray together. Father, I thank you for every person that's engaging today, wherever they might be. I pray you'd open up our lives and hearts to the work that you want to do deeply. I know that there are stresses and anxieties and all kinds of things that you are um, healing and working out in people's lives. And I pray that we'd have a profound sense of your presence with us. And God, collectively today as a church community, we just say our hearts are open, our minds are open, our hands are open to what you want to do where you are leading us. And I pray we would make a deep commitment first and foremost to the scriptures being the primary voice in our life to shape faith and conduct. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. In the morning I will rise up and share the darkness and bathe in your light. And I recount all Every blessing The words you've spoken That bring me new life Let's sing this together I am reminded From where you have brought me And where you have placed me For today And I won't forget Your hand will hold me And your love sustains me Through the way I wait on you, Lord I wait on you, Lord Oh, the burden that I've carried They are heavy Oh, too heavy to hold Yeah There's a river There's a sunrise There's a new day And it's bringing new life I am reminded From where you
Hey, thanks again for spending some time with us today. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, if you're new around here, go to mynextbeststep.org. Let us know that you're new. Also, at mynextbeststep.org, you can click a button there and give to the mission of Brooklake. Our church family and the mission that we do is entirely funded by the people who call Brooklake home. And so I just want to say thank you to those of you who invest in this mission with your dollars. Thank you for that. Maybe you've never taken that step or maybe you've done it one time or two times, but you'd like to sign up to do that on a recurring basis so that we can better plan for the future of our church and the mission Jesus has us on. You can do that at mynextbeststep.org as well. I also want to circle back to what I mentioned at the beginning of this service. On February 14th, some of our teams are going to be back here in the building during the live stream to help bolster the live stream experience for you at home. This will be our first step towards reopening. Allowing certain teams in the building will help keep our numbers somewhat low, but will allow some people in the building, again, to help the live stream experience just look better, feel better, be a better experience for you at home. And it also allows those of you who serve on one of these teams to be here in person with other people, making a difference for Jesus. So I wanna just quickly give you a heads up on what teams are gonna be here in person starting February 14th. And you can expect if you're on one of these teams for your team leader to reach out to you with more information. If you're not on one of these teams, go to mynextbeststep.org and click that button that says join a team. You can join a team today or you can just learn more. If you click that button, you can shoot me an email and learn more about these teams and we can get the conversation started if you'd like to be one of the people here in the building February 14th serving. So with that, uh, social media team, photography team, the first impressions team online, that's like our church online team, is doing everything from shooting video to running the YouTube chat, helping people feel welcome. Our band will be here. The green room team will have somebody here to help prep the green room for all the volunteers who are here, all those who are making a difference. Uh, the prayer team will be here, praying during the service for people who are in the chat, sharing prayer requests, uh, praying for people who are texting in, all that kind of stuff. And then our engagement team. And our engagement team is a new team uh, that we're putting together. And essentially, in short, this team is full of people who love to engage in worship. They love to take notes during the sermon. We're going to have those kinds of people here in person uh, to just help bolster that experience. Again, you can learn more about that by going to mynextbeststep.org. Thank you again for joining us. And let me leave us, as I do every week, by reading our benediction. Our benediction says this, may the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace. Love you. <laughs>